This case in particular, in my opinion, has got to be one of the worst travesties of justice that I have ever heard of. This case probably will make you very upset, and I honestly do not blame you whatsoever. Now, if you've never heard of the name Ethan Couch, you're going to find out very shortly. So Ethan Couch was born April 11th, 1997, and when he was 16 years old, he killed four people while under the influence of alcohol and drugs. He injured nine others, but killed four. We're going to get into all the details, of course, on this case. And as you can tell, I'm walking down the road here. And this road, this is where the crash happened. And so I'm going to show you the actual crash site. And there is a little memorial cross where, where it happened, or nearby where it happened. So on the evening of June 15th, 2013, Ethan went to a Walmart where he stole several cases of beer uh, before getting in his pickup truck which was his father's pickup truck, um, along with seven of his friends. They were speeding roughly around 70 to 80 miles an hour in a 40 mile an hour zone. They were on this road, which I'm on right now. It's Burleson Retta Road, which is, I wanna say it's like on the outskirts of Fort Worth. It's in a town called Burleson. Um, and on this road, a motorist named Brianna Mitchell, her vehicle had stalled, so her vehicle was kind of partially on the road still. Meanwhile, Holly Boyles and her daughter Shelby Boyles, who lived nearby, uh, came out of their house to, to try to help her. And then a passing motorist named Brian Jennings, who was a youth minister, also stopped to try to help. So there were several cars kind of on the roadway um, trying to help uh, you know, Brianna Mitchell, whose car was stalled. Ethan, again, was speeding down the road um, under the influence. So Ethan's vehicle then swerved off the road and into Brianna Mitchell's vehicle, which, again, was stalled, and in turn then crashed into Brian Jennings' vehicle. And that car ended up getting pushed into oncoming lane, uh, which hit a oncoming Volkswagen Beetle. Ethan Couch's truck then flipped over and hit a tree. Brianna Mitchell, Brian Jennings, and both of the Boyles all died on impact. Somehow, miraculously though, Ethan Couch and his seven teenage passengers all survived, even though none of them were wearing seatbelts, although one of them was paralyzed. Now, Obviously, as you can imagine, with something of that magnitude and that much force, there was carnage of all three of the vehicles that, you know, were crashed, you know, for like a half mile down the, this road right here. Um, it was absolutely just devastation, um, as you can imagine. Of course, police were called and dispatched to the scene, and several hours after the incident happened, Ethan blew a .24 for his blood alcohol level. Again, that's about three times the legal limit, you know, in the United States. He also tested positive for marijuana and diazepam in his system. Now, this is the part of the story that, again, makes me incredibly furious. And, uh, and again, and I'm sure it'll make you incredibly furious if you've never heard what happened to Ethan. But anyway, so he was uh, charged with four counts of intoxication manslaughter, which is an appropriate charge, but the outcome is what is what makes this case just absolutely frustrating. So a psychologist was hired by Ethan's defense team and claimed that Ethan was a product of what most of people would call affluenza. And basically what that means is, according to the psychologist, uh, Ethan was not able to link his actions with his consequences because of his upbringing and because his parents never really taught him right from wrong. Because Ethan's family was extremely rich, they were able to 
get the judge to sentence Ethan to, uh, again, he got 10 years probation, um, no jail time. Keep in mind, he killed four people and injured nine others. Killed four people. And he got basically sent to uh, some sort of treatment, mental health, substance abuse facility. And was ordered not to take any alcohol or drugs or drive. Now, the facility apparently cost... $750 per day. He apparently stayed there for it looks like several several years. He didn't go to he didn't go to prison. <laughs> that is what it comes down to. And until that is in late 2015, 2 years after he killed the four people, he ended up fleeing with his mother as he had been seen someone posted a video of him drinking which again was a violation of his probation. So he became basically a fugitive where he and his mother fled the country and were finally found on December 28th, 2015. Um, they were in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. He then was ordered to serve 720 days in jail for the probation violation. And it looks like he potentially got arrested for some other probation violation after that. But regardless, he got more time in jail for his probation violation than he did for actually killing four innocent people. And that, to me, makes this one of the worst, absolutely worst forms of justice that I have ever freaking heard of. The actual crash site happened between uh, 1551 Burleson Retta Road and 1525 Burleson Retta Road. Um, and again, it's basically between these two houses here and the cross or memorial is right across the street. So I wanted to make sure I showed you this cross here. Now, again, I uh, attempted to find the four victims graves. However, two of the victims are buried out of state. Um, one of the victims was cremated and then the other victim, it just says unknown. So I attempted to to go film the graves for you, but unfortunately, I, I just can't. Anyway, guys, so this is, again, one of those cases that I really, really wanted to come get to because when I heard about this initially, just like I'm sure when you guys heard about this initially, I was outraged. I was, I was so outraged. I was like, are you kidding me? The actual judge who proceeded over Ethan's case I believe that judge got many, many forms of hate mail or phone calls because, of course, just like you and me, a lot of people were not happy, especially the victims' families. Anyway, guys, I, I, that, I can't feel much more than what I just showed you at the crash site and the cross, so I'm going to head out of here. But again, um, as always, my name is Harmon. It just started to pour down rain, so I'm going to head out of here. <laughs> Thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Stay safe out there.